I'll tell you, I'm having a little Fez Watley problem. Every time I go to call Fez, I call the cell phone. It's turned off. Then I have to call his house phone. You do the same thing? Shit, yes. I always call a cell phone first because uh, that's the natural instinct. Who doesn't have their cell phone <laughs> on at all times? It's like he's I, punishing us. I turn my cell phone off when I go home. It's not a car phone. This isn't 1991 and you have a car phone. <laughs> it's a cell phone. It means that you're constantly connected. Well, I would be if people would call my home number. I'm home. When I'm home, use the home number. How do we know where you are? If we call your cell phone and that just becomes your number. That Now, here's two other things. A, he doesn't know how to get messages on his house phone. And B, I know he doesn't know how to get messages on his cell phone. <laughs> because he never says, hey, I'm calling you back. So I don't even leave messages anymore. <laughs> He's a taskmaster. He's forcing us to call his home. No, line. I have two phones. I have a cell phone for when I am on out uh, away from my home. When I am at my home, which is most of the time, I have a home number that I use. Why would it's you turn your hard. cell phone off? You think it's going to catch on fire like my grandmother always <laughs> writes about? I'm just oh, I don't that. want that. You ever try to give your grandmother something? <laughs> yeah. She always thinks it's going to catch on fire. She won't accept the CD player, for fuck's sake. Do you know how to use the cell phone? Yes, you know I know what? how to Give use it. Give it to me, I'm going to break it. No, <laughs> Give it to me, I'm going to break it, because it's phone. fucking useless. No. I, when I am home, I prefer to use my home number. That's why I have a house phone. Don't have a house phone. People don't anymore. You should be connected to the world at all times. But I am with my house phone. You know what I got to give them? I got to get them one of those jitterbugs, like they get for the old people. <laughs> Have you seen those commercials? Yep. Earl, look that up for me. It's a it's a fucking cell phone for like your grandmother, and it's got really giant numbers on it, like it was made by Play School. And then one of the things just says home and operator, so they could hit. And they're all during this commercial, they're like, "Oh, I love it. I'm able to use a phone now." Uh, you got it, Earl. All right, play yeah. it for me. This is what I'm getting you, Fez. All right. Now technology and simplicity have come together to create a cell phone unlike any other. Let us size that thing. <laughs> it's just gigantic. <laughs> Who needs glasses? It's so simple. You don't need a 400-page manual to use it. <laughs> That's your cousin. <fuzzy. laughs> That's my beard. features. Just the ones you really need. Oh, I can hear everything clear as a bell. Jitterbug is the cell phone my parents will It's nice and use. loud. Special operators can assist you 24 hours a day. Oh, oh perfect, guys. May I place a call for you? Hi. And I get a great connection wherever I go. Call now. 1 800 Why is it the Jitterbug, though? Well, because back in your day, you used to do that dance. Oh. Jitterbug. Free easy payments of $49. Service as low as $10 a month. Call today. And well, it's affordable. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'm, I'm willing to pay whatever. Here's what. Let's think of this now as worst job ever. You're the jitterbug operator. <laughs> I smell some kind of smoke coming. I can't find my keys, jitterbug lady. You're just sitting there going, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Do you know where my glasses are? <laughs> so I'm going to get you jitterbug. No, I am fine. I just call my house phone when you... Now i got to make two fucking calls <laughs> is what I'm trying to tell you. Make one to the home. You, what if you're not there? I call the house. Right. You're, if you're not there, now I'm making a fucking second call. Mm. Why do I have to have two numbers for you? Who are you, the fucking president? <laughs> Just have a cell phone. Dave, do you call anyone else's house? No. No, just keep your cell phone on, but in the charger. Guess what? I have one call now to my house phone. Fez Watley. <laughs> when... It fucking rings. It's now like the bat phone where everybody else Fez is on the phone without it being anywhere near it. You and Blowhard have got to move into the millennium. I also don't trust cell phone reliability. They're reliable. What are you, crazy? <laughs> I hate drop calls. It doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> where, why are you living fucking 10 years behind yourself? Plus, the son of a bitch has dial-up on his computer, <laughs> so I can't send him any video. 
And is it because your computer's too old? Yeah, they told me. I, I looked into, what do they call the new stuff? The DSL or whatever. Yeah, 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 DSL. yeah that's real new. <laughs> so I looked into that and they said it won't fit with my, it won't work with my computer. Buy a new computer. Or right now I announce exactly how much money you make. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> everyone can be furious. My computer and is fine. And Pitsy will never look at you again. <laughs> Ron, he's having a lot of problems on his IBM Commodore. That <laughs> I wish he had a Commodore. I salute the Commodore. <laughs> he doesn't play video games. <laughs> Unless it's the Atari 2400. And if you picked up his house phone, how can we all know about his robot answering service uh, that picks that, up? That is useless. It's useless to leave him a message. Well, I can't figure out the call waiting sometimes. No, because when you're not there... The, I end up hanging up on two people. The answering machine tells us to call back. Doesn't yeah, I don't sense. know what that problem is. You. You are the problem, <laughs> Grandma. And if you don't fucking update yourself, it's going to be assisted living. That's where <laughs> this ends up. I am not ready to go into assisted living. Oh, you're more than ready. <laughs> and you're going to have a Jamaican nurse feeding you. <laughs> Sounds nice, but no. Put a life alert around your neck as well. Oh, come on, Mrs. Watley. You have to eat. <laughs> Here is uh, Pat. Pat, you're around Fez. Hey, uh, Ronnie. How's it going? Hey, um, Fezzy, there's no reason for you to have a home phone. I don't understand why you still have a home phone. I don't have a home phone. I have a, a cell phone. and every That's how people get a hold of me. It's ridiculous. People have phones with them at all times now. That's it. That's simple. You have your keys. You have your wallet. You have your phone. That's life. Yes. And I have this phone. And if I am not at home, feel free to call it. <laughs> I'm not calling you anymore. Why? That ends it. <laughs> He's actually gotten pissed off at me for calling him on his cell phone when he was at home. Oh, because, have you ever noticed this? How he acts when it's his cell phone? It's like he's twirling it around. It happens during the show. His family calls him because if they don't hear from him, they assume he's dead. And you just see him walking. Hello? Yeah. Hello? The hello is it's one not of the, the <laughs> easiest thing to use. And when I say hello on this you thing, you need a jitterbug. Uh, Maybe where I could hear it better. Sometimes you think Fez has killed someone and is storing the body in his apartment because the way he says, stink? <laughs> the way he says hello, either on the ho house or cell phone, is hello. But then, <laughs> eyes wide open. Oh, I do jump when the phone rings. It <laughs> scares the hell out of me. Why would a phone scare you? I don't know. It. I always jump when the phone rings. <laughs> Maybe if you stop referring to it as the death phone, where he <laughs> thinks if the phone rings, he's getting a call because a relative has passed away. <laughs> For me, it's like getting a telegram. It's gotta be bad news. It would be easier to fucking reach you by telegram. <laughs> I'm ready to Pony Express, except <laughs> the horse will drown in the middle of that fucking East River. <laughs> My uh, mother-in-law is in town, so I walked her over the East River and had Fez wave out the window. He always sticks a <laughs> towel out the window so we can see his apartment. He's got a beautiful view of New York, and he's got a balcony, but he won't walk out on it because uh, he, he's afraid. <laughs> so he's got a beautiful view on a balcony and he's afraid of it. So he... <laughs> He looks like uh, one of the terrorists from Munich in 1972. Well, what I did was I just I just opened the sliding door and put the towel out there and and just stuck my arm out as far as I could to wave it from inside the apartment. Are you ever afraid the Israel government's going to assassinate you? No, I'm not afraid of that. I just have trouble when I step out on my balcony. I get a little unsteady. Is what happens. <laughs> Why not go out there? And then I made the mistake of trying to hold up the cat for everyone to see and got the hell scratched out of my arm. Yeah, we can see a cat from that far away. <laughs> it's criminal behavior. Uh, here is uh, Mark. Mark, you're on a Fez. Hey, Fezzy, I'm wondering if you still carry around a uh, old paper address book with you everywhere you go. He's also mad that XM won't give him a check. He feels <laughs> like he's a nervous wreck. Trying to, it's like she, he, he goes, they mail the check to the bank. I go, no, they don't. Yeah. There is, he goes, they won't give me my check. They're giving it to the bank. I go, no, they're not. <laughs> I like just to see wired. the check instead of having the bank see it. Why? Like Why? You don't spend money, Fez. <laughs> you don't spend money. I like. Why don't I announce to everybody how much money please, you make? No, you don't please. announce how much I make. Can you just give us the first digit? The first digit. No, don't. Please. 
It's really annoying. <laughs> You can give out the last digit. What if we zero? Get, can we have one guess for the first digit? One no. guess. No. You write it down. Write it down what you think it is. No, wait, wait. <laughs> He's having trouble with his numbers. Lower? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Let's quit talking about that. <laughs> Rockefeller over there. <laughs> Rockefeller's grandmother <laughs> who still collected toilet paper. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do one night, Fez? What? Go over there with a couple of fucking crack-smoking gangsters and beat the shit out of you and take your money. Why? <laughs> Why would you do that to me? I see it happening in the paper. No one ever gets caught. I won't open the door. Please. When do you ever sit in a stank apartment? <laughs> There's no breeze. <laughs> I actually saw something on Fark.com where a guy in Brazil... Robbed this house, stole uh, uh, stole all the stuff to smoke crack, and then when he ran out of crack, decided to rob it again. And but he f kept smoking the crack and fell asleep in the apartment. So he kept robbing the same house over and over again, yeah. passing out on crack. Well, uh, this is going to surprise you, but criminals aren't all that smart. <laughs> this fucking guy in my neighborhood, he he, he robbed this. Uh, it was like a drugstore restaurant. And he he went in, busted in, ate the drugs. But the police were able to nab him because he was sleeping next to a burning hamburger that he tried to fry <laughs> up in the middle of the fucking night. And he was a guy I knew. Well, my dad just drops the paper in front of me. Fucking proud of yourself? Is that who you like to fucking run around with? I go, uh, uh, this is crazy. I don't know how this would happen. Seems very out of character. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, are they sure it was him? Yeah, they know it was him. What a master fucking criminal. <laughs> Falls asleep in front of the grill. Well, breaking an entry isn't enough. They like to make themselves at home. Well, you get confused. <laughs> you get confused. And I always say, if you're going to rob a drugstore, eat the drugs at home. Don't fucking feel like you have to eat them immediately. Right. Um, here's uh, Dave. Dave, you're on Fez. Oh, I lost you. Here is uh, RC. RC, you're on Fez. Hey, buddies. Yeah. Uh, Fez, what are you spending all your money on, man? You take the subway everywhere, you got a used cat, you have a computer from 1996. What are you doing? That motherfucker will not get the cab. You ever notice that? No. Yeah, yes, yes. I noticed that. He'll never do it. I take the subway. Yes, it's there. I, I uh, support mass transit in the city. Hmm. And I'm saving my money for a rainy day. It's gonna be the end of the earth. <laughs> a storm that will rival Noah. I don't know what that's talking about. <laughs> I hate having you on my side. <laughs> it's so much more fun to have you on the other team. You know why? Because you're easy to beat. <laughs> you're so easy to beat. I'm not. All right, now I'm fucking stuck. <laughs> I can't come back with it. Speaking of easy to beat, uh, you had the big softball game. Yes, we did. Uh, and how did your team make out? Well, Mr. B, I think this will tell you how my team oh. made out. Here's the fucking trophy. Wow, nice. We took the gold. We upset the world. Muhammad Ali was nothing on Sonny Liston. All right, let me take... Uh, I don't even know what you're talking about there. That doesn't make sense. Biggest upset of all time. The team we took down was two-time champions. Uh, the Yankees, managed by Sergeant Magoo. The only thing I could see was the curse. Mr. Earl Douglas. Earl, curse. your team? Yep, we, we lost. You had the opportunity to join Dave's team. You wouldn't yep. do it. I, I joined And Pitsy. Stayed loyal to my team. I stayed loyal to the Yankees. Rather than the, the show, Yankees. and that's what he gets. The bad karma, and we crushed him, and Earl did not live up to his name. The way he played, I'm so happy we didn't have him. He played like shit. Really? Shit. Uh, I played like shit. I hit, I, they're still trying to find the ball I hit out Whoa. there. Wow. Oh, he's a legend. Why? They're still <laughs> trying to find the ball. And, and get a new one. Launch one into the next county. 6-4. <laughs> six, 6-4, four, six, four, our team's up. Two outs, fourth inning. Bases loaded. So up steps Earl Douglas. What does he do? Goes for the grand slam. Little fly ball caught by Lax play in right Little field. fly ball. He caught it at the edge of the freaking grass. And There's no, a lip of the grass where the, the ball went. Uh, the grass in right field, which was 80 feet away. So actually, there was no home runs. If you hit to those bushes, it was a double. Yeah, that was the so Earl's bragging about a home. There was no home runs, first of all, because the, the bushes were 80 feet. Well, he, they, they completely flipped the ground rules over. So, it, like, 
I hit one into the next millennium. Elmo hit one oh to the next millennium. God. Next millennium. There was no next millennium. Dude, the, but it was a everything. Everything that got I, hit out out was a ground rule double. Mr. But Every what are you gonna do? You're playing on a short field, right? Exactly. <laughs> but it's softball. But it, here's the thing, though. Like, let's say if you hit one down the like the third baseline and it rolled and it kept rolling into the grass. Yeah. It was still a live ball, even though you couldn't find That's the ball. You, to go you know in the what? Grass. That's fucking Twin Oaks rules, my friend. <laughs> you hit it in the fucking woods. It's a double. But pee patch is all you can get. If pull that motherfucker yeah. in the pee patch and you run all day. My point is, if he would have gone for the line drive or the hard ground ball through the gap, that ball keeps rolling. He circles the bases. That's how I hit all game long. All right, Pitsy. And that wasn't the Earl Douglas rule. That was the rule for everybody. So it's not and like Earl was the only one getting robbed. I, and I, I, I pointed out other. I mean, I mean, both games. Everyone was guys who were hitting the ball. But out. that's. Would you rather somebody hits it eighty feet and it's fucking home run? That doesn't make sense, Earl. It was as you gotta have ground rules. It was as now, small Pitsy, as Willie. I'm looking at you with that mustache. Did you go there in your Mario Kart, or how'd you get there? <laughs> you are without shame. No, I'm not. I I have to keep the mustache for one more week, and then it's gonna be gone. Why? Did, I, so people can't see that you're balding. <laughs> a friendly wager. Who who are you wagering? Uh, me and my other friend. We just decided to grow mustaches. All right, and guess what? You're never shaving it. <laughs> While you're doing your friendly wager, that's the Pitsy look now. I like it. I actually, I think I look a little like Daniel Plainview with my... <laughs> yeah, plus 80 pounds. Yeah. You look like you should be chasing a blue monkey. <laughs> and Earl, Earl what did you do in the championship game? Um, I went one for three in the championship game. Move. With a walk. Meanwhile, uh, Eastside Dave went four for four. Dave, and oh, all put out bullshit. I mean, Sergeant Magoo was kicking the ball around. He hit two. Dave hit two ground balls straight to Magoo. He flubbed them That's both. That's good. Right, wait, hold on. Blame the loss on the war veteran. Good. So yeah, you were saying it's the troops' fault. <laughs> I'm not saying it's the troops' fault. Dave's so the, the about fucking it. problem is Magoo. That was, was the problem with your Magoo team. Magoo had a couple of problems at short. We all did. We all had problems in the field. I didn't hear we all. I just heard Magoo. Good. M Magoo, you're going back to tour of duty. God bless you. Except for Earl Douglas, who says you suck. I didn't say that. I just said he had a couple of problems in the field. We, um, but I, we all Who did. was on your team, Earl? Um, we had Elmo. We had... You so, blaming Elmo? I'm not blaming El Elmo. Just, had, just Magoo? Not Magoo. Uh, we you had, did blame Magoo. <laughs> you just blamed him. <laughs> all I'm saying is that Dave, he had a couple of ground balls directly to Magoo. Where were you flung. playing? I was playing first base. Yeah. Oh. And he tripped one time and, and kept rolling and rolling and uh, cost him uh, at least three bases. Who who runs your team? Uh, who it was, the Skippers? Uh, Sergeant Magoo was the uh, manager. But Earl fails to tell you that he tried to take that managerial position from him in the middle of the game. He tried to pep talk everybody halfway through yeah, yeah, instead I, of I, fucking I, what trying was to hit. He would go <laughs> on a 2-0 count with Mafia Life Chris, I mean, Mafia Life Chris pitching. Earl would walk to the mound, take three minutes during a... You know, 85 degree heat summer softball. What are you game. talking about? I was telling Mafia Life Chris because he because he was a little he was a little tight. I just walked up to him and was like, "Hey, you all he right?" He was a little tight. Yeah, because that's a fucking softball. <laughs> game. No, I mean, but tight is softball. No, game. but he was like, I was because he looked very like flushed and flustered. I was like, "Oh, you all right?" It's like just relax. And Take a deep breath and play. Every time he had a pep talk, it was like Tommy Lasorda in the '77 series. The fucking minute he got away from the mound, boom, there's a home run. So his, <laughs> so his pep talks were not successful. I have never heard you pep talk anyone in my life. I, I, I couldn't help myself. I, cause I, knew, I knew we were a better team than what we were playing, and I just said, is everyone all right? Is everyone and okay? Your pep I, talks now are we have like Earl. <laughs> we have Doom. There's a black cloud that somehow... <laughs> now this, the, the team that Earl was on... And the previous years, did they win the championship? Back-to-back -back champions. It's only been three years, so they won the first two championships, and they're a fucking powerhouse. They're not just good, they are great. <laughs> there was one different roster change. Yeah, 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 yeah it, was, it was that one difference when we won the first game 26-4. to four. The first game doesn't matter shit, dude. You're in the championship game, that's all what it comes down well, you to. You have to win that Boston first. Patriots. But, but and last year's first. championship game we, was only decided by one point. This year was nine runs that we won what? by. Nine? Earl! 13-6. Sorry, oh, seven six. Why don't you stop giving? You. Why don't you stop giving people schlep talks? That's the fucking problem, schlep rock. They're better known as eulogies. Uh, here's um, here's your picture. The man who was tight. Doing, oh, what's with the face, Earl? You're blaming him. I'm not blaming him. He pitched. I thought we we 
completely You weren't playing fail- fast pitch, right? <laughs> no. What is there to fucking talk about? I, I thought we completely... Because I thought he pitched very well, and we just did not play behind him. Were they walking him people? Was that a problem? No. He walked he one pi- I think he walked one guy. He pitched very well. We just, we just couldn't make plays. So what are you pep-talking someone for when he's fucking lobbing a ball? <laughs> That's like pep talking somebody where they're drinking out of a water fountain. <laughs> Come on, just keep sucking. Take it all in. All right, wipe your lip. Uh, here's Mafia Life, Chris. What's up, guys? Yeah. Oh, God. About between every single pitch. Hey, they can't kill you, Chris. They haven't hurt you yet. <laughs> You're on top of your game. They won't break you. <laughs> what are you saying now. to a person? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, you I'm motivating my that, guy. Now, w- not one of your motivations is fucking pointed towards the positive. <laughs> You're bringing up <laughs> negative things all the time. And we also forgot to mention Earl's calisthenics routine before each game, where he oh. was jumping around and scouting the field while and, doing hopscotch and, and not doing hopscotch and taking batting practice by himself. If there's no more perfect example of the antisocial Earl. 50 people at this place. He couldn't get one guy to throw him a ball. He he would go to well, the- everyone was everyone was eating and drinking at that point. Yes. And I was I was ready to play. I'd already eaten. I I already ate. I already I was ready to play. He couldn't get one guy to just throw him some pitches. Okay. So he's standing on the field by himself, tossing him up and throwing him, <laughs> re- retrieving <laughs> the right, ball. Could, Chris, you get how you what can, was it helpful for you to have Earl behind you? You know, I'll tell you in the beginning. I am a little stiff, but I'm, it has nothing to do with the game. I got fucking so, so I'm always stiff. You know what I mean? I, I, that's just me. But, like, in the beginning, it helped out a little bit. In Earl's defense, I think he did great, you know, at that and so forth. And it helped me. And it was, I just found it funny that as we slowly lost, those one-liners went from, like, they haven't got you yet to, like, <sighs> I got one more swing in me. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> was the swing worth what? nine runs? What was the last thing he said to you? <laughs> the, uh, the last thing he said to me, I believe, was, we embarrassed ourselves. <laughs> 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 Mr. Pepto! Because <laughs> I, 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 I thought, Chris, I thought you pitched very well, and we, I, I'm, you're right. We, embar- <laughs> we absolutely embarrassed ourselves, because we were far better than what we played. Uh, yeah. tell, tell the truth, seriously, <laughs> if, the, if it wasn't for a couple fielding errors, we had these guys. I mean, 25 to 4, the first game. It means nothing. You, know, you gotta it. win the championship game. You lost by 9. You play this game once a year. You get one moment of glory. Of yeah. course you beat Philly and Boston. That's two <laughs> alcoholic cities. Right. It was ridiculous. It, it, but in our defense, the field and the, the way the gameplay was, the, it was always like a high number game because it was always knocking the ball, you know. There is the no defense. You field. play a game. Nine runs is nothing, though. That's you win or lose, period. What, how, who fucking makes up excuses for a once a year softball game? Yeah, we lost. I, I, you know, I get, get Earl Douglas, uh, we embarrassed ourselves. <laughs> we embarrassed ourselves. Who, who's the MVP, Dave? Um, Wicked Boss. Nice. Who's this Wicked Boss? Uh, well, pal talk guy, FBA guy, and uh, fantastic fielder, fantastic hitter. Uh, I don't know him, huh? Yeah. All right, Chris. We got it next year, man. Well, okay, can't wait. <laughs> or I'll start doing calisthenics for next year. What? I, I stretched that. I did. You I do it every game. Before every game, I stretch. I do. I do. Every, I do that before every. Oh, you out of control again? I'm not out of control. Not at all. Can I uh, read an email that was sent to me? Or you got a problem with that? Well, go ahead. Are you sure? I'm positive. Do you know what it's about? Uh, no, I don't. All right. What about this? Hey, Ron. Remember that South African girl from Bar 9 on Saturday. Uh, we did meet a South African girl. Her name was uh, Peach Pear Plum, and she's on Pal Talk. Really, really attractive girl. Turns out Earl got her number, and he's been doing that whole calling thing and talking and talking and talking and talking. She's weirded out by him and is afraid of him, of t- him talking about her on the air. She really wants to meet Brian K. Vaughn on Thursday, but she's weirded out by Earl. So the only thing I can ask you to do is tell him to knock it off. She's all skeeved out about Earl, and she'd rather not be part of this. 
Well, I, I don't know where this is coming from. First of all, Earl, why do you get so obsessed when you meet somebody? I'm not getting calling. obsessed at all. I mean, this is what happened. We were talking at Bar 9, and, and we, we were talking about photography. Oh. We were talking about photography. She's a photography major. Earl, let me, can I explain something to you? She's from South Africa. Yes. Do you kind of see the problem there? <laughs> yes. This I mean, is I, the same <laughs> thing as you were asking out a girl from South Philly. You're going to get your ass beat. <laughs> it's not a good thing for you. <laughs> now, I, wa I wonder about the opportunity to meet Brian K. Vaughn. Should I have Earl sit at it out on Thursday? I think you have to. I will be nothing but nice. I will be cordial. I will be professional. You I will scare be, her. Why don't you I'll, take a day for yourself? I don't want Thursday. to take a day. Take a day. See how the show does without you. I bet it does well. I mean, I and I, I have all the confidence. Right, let me in the bring world. this up to Baby Girl. Have you ever had a guy who you think is nice and then you see how much they want you and they hound you too much and they call you? Not really. It doesn't bother you? Then can I have your number? <laughs> Sure. I just like to call for some late night deep breathing. But do you see what you're doing here, Earl? You saw a small crack of light. Just the tiniest crack of light. And you shoved your whole fucking head into it like a maniac. And I, I don't see it that way at all. I mean, I'm, if someone's going to tell me tell me something, and like, hey, do this, do this, I'll do it. And, I'll, and I'm fine with well, it. Well, then I'm telling you, take <laughs> off Thursday so the girl can come in here. Deal? And feel safe. I don't, I don't want to take the day off. If she, Don't take the day off. Take three hours off. Take <laughs> noon to three off. Perfect. And go work on your swing and pep talk. <laughs> go, pep, go take some BP by yourself in the park. <laughs> but I, oh, God. I just... You want me to list the number I'll, I'll, of girls right, I'll that take I had... the three. I'll take the three hours off. Good. <laughs> so, I mean, so everyone, to make everyone happy, uh, if that's the way everyone wants. Because, you know, I would start and bring up a list of names of people over the years that said, Ronnie, he's calling me 14 times a day. <laughs> Which is... All these different girls that say the same thing. I oh. don't know where it's coming from. But, I told you but, where it's coming from. But, you know what? We're the, all I'll, these I'll, girls are friends of all of I'll, us. I will take the three off. If that'll make everyone happy, I will take the three hours off. Here's what happens. Girls, they want to come to the show, so they have to give their phone number so they can, uh, you know, say, oh, here's what time you show up, and here's how you get back. And then Earl would keep calling them later. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Because you know he's in here by himself all mm -hmm. night yeah. with every fucking TV going, listening no. to Dillette stereo, <laughs> no. uh, jerking off watching the Yankees game, <laughs> calling our friends. Dozens of calls, and then those calls... Go on and on and on. To where ice, these... I what mean, happened when Ice Cream Girl's uh, fucking boyfriend had to call you? But she called me! Who called you that morning and said you had to stop calling her she, and her parents? She <laughs> called me. She, that was, I was, and that's I why was, the guy threatened was to kill dressed, you. I was dressed. I'm, <laughs> I'm, in my, I'm in Sunday clothes. I'm walking out the door. <laughs> Sunday clothes. <laughs> what are you, eight? I'm, I'm, like, I'm in a suit. I'm, I'm leaving the building. <laughs> All right, hold on. Here's uh, Millie Hatchet. Hey, Millie. Hey, Ronnie. Yeah. Oh, my God. Earl was texting and calling Peachy five minutes after we left that night. Why, That Earl? is so not true. Why would oh Millie God, make it up? I'm the right making there, That is a lie. That's a flat out lie. Flat out lie. Right I went there. home. Oof. He's H O M E. I went home. <laughs> why <laughs> would Millie lie? Spell I don't know why she's lying. Why would these other emails I, I lie? I don't know why she's lying, but that is so not true. Oh, you I can't went text home. from your house, Earl. You can't use your phone in your house. It's, it's two o'clock in the morning. I went home. Exactly. You went home and you started texting this poor oh. little no, I did not. Girl. Girl. He was oh, texting with his dick. <laughs> How old is she? 19. Oh, you sick bastard. Earl! She's a baby. Half the age of Earl Douglas. <laughs> Good lord. I, this is so not true. And she was scared. I had to hold her all night. I'm sure you did. Thank you, Earl. Well, yeah, I mean, exactly. How far do these girls have to be pushed? I mean, they, I, any one of these girls seems very nice and would, like, be nice to Earl. How far does it have to go before they finally have to say something about it? It must be insanity. Well, she was going to call some of her friends from South Africa to come over. You know, I'd stay away. All right, thanks, Billy. Bye. He's like John Favreau in Swingers. <laughs> he just will call 
and call. And now, if you don't know Africa the way I do, South Africa is what's considered the nice side of town. That's oh, actually, hmm. that's actually what I consider the livable part of Africa. There's running water. There's electricity. <laughs> nice. Uh, less disease. It's segregated for hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. What do you even fucking possibly know your history? <laughs> hundreds of years. Well, it was segregated for a long time. A long time. It's free. It's free now. But the fucking president was laying upside down in uh, in there for. Here's the beauty of this. Earl will do any. You're so lonely. You're so lonely and sick and twisted that the second a girl is nice to you, you turn it into a slasher film. <laughs> you know how, like, in a slasher film, the girl who shows even the slightest bit of sexuality has her head cut off? That's what Earl's look. You ought to put a hockey mask on when you go out at night. Uh, and, 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 and this is why I stay... <laughs> stay home. You, you know where you're going to be on Thursday? I, I, you're going to be in a cage I'm not, that we hang over the Times Square <laughs> so we know where you are. I love like it. David I'm, Blaine. I'm Red not cage. in a cage, but I, I, if, if that'll make everyone happy, I'll stay away, but I'm not going in a cage. Where are you going to go? You're going to fucking uh, go to the parking uh, garage and be ready to pounce on her <laughs> no. after we leave her alone? Absolutely not. Where are you going to go? I, I, don't, I don't know. I you really know she was 19? No, I did not. I, I didn't I didn't know. A year for so every call, call she got. Yeah, yes, I did call her. How many times? Um, I called. I called her Sunday afternoon, and we got cut off. Cut off. She hung up. <laughs> she got, we got. Well, we got cut off. I was in my apartment. We got cut off mid sentence. Right when you were coming. <laughs> no, I don't do that. that. Fucking mouth breather. <laughs> <laughs> was this your way of dealing with the frustration of making the Yankees lose? No, the game the game was the game. Whatever happened, happened, and then I let it go. <laughs> have you ever beat Dave in anything? Nope. What What all of you guys competed in? We competed in a wiffle ball challenge. Right. Um, oh, yeah. Twice. Once at Debbie's, once here. I struck him out in five pitches. We've competed in a basketball challenge. We've now competed in a softball challenge. At uh, Debbie's, we had a soccer challenge where I defeated him. So Speaking of which, I have another spy report. Spy report. Spy report. Last call that Earl gave to this teenager, 1.30 a.m. last night, she refused to answer. <gasps> 1.30 in yeah. the morning? What? She she left me a message. She left me a message at that. You called somebody 1.30 a.m., and you just met them last I, Friday. I had a, it said missed call, and I, call, I just returned the call. 1.30 a.m. Yeah, so I just called go. Now, I, what's the latest call? you've ever called me? Maybe midnight? I don't Never know. Never in your fucking <laughs> life. Maybe. I don't know. Midnight. Really. The latest you've ever called me is 8.30 at night. <laughs> I fucking guarantee it. And even then, you're like, well, I apologize calling you, but the studio is on fire. <laughs> <laughs> and even then, he's scared to call. <sighs> Thank you. You're calling teens. I didn't say much. How do you think Wiki feels you're calling 19-year-old fucking <laughs> listeners at 1.30 a.m.? Is that going to be a good thing or a bad thing? Probably you know what? Let's call Wiki and tell him. I'm not Let's call, call Elo. Hey, Earl's calling listeners 1.30 a.m. And see if they fucking believe any of these crazy <laughs> stories. Hello, teen line. You can <laughs> knock Imus off the front page. This You could be the best thing that ever happened to Imus. <laughs> Baby girl, anywhere you can find somebody for him? I don't think, no. I don't think anybody's interested in Earl. Why? I'm, Why I'm, is it? You're, you're, too, you're too abrasive and weird. I'm not too abrasive. You're I mean, weird. I, mean, I, don't, I don't think I'm weird at all. I think I'm just, too, I'm, I know I'm set in my ways. Everyone's told me that. Yeah, you're set in your ways. You stop, you fucking helm children. Yep, every 1.30 a.m. you got to get up and call <laughs> a teenager. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I just, hey. I am who I am. I can't help it. Like a kid toucher. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> like Dahmer. But, I mean, this is what, but this is why I completely isolate myself because everything gets. You don't com completely isolate yourself. I'll bring up the number of girls you've stalked. But, but this is You're why. But wacky. this is why I don't. I mean, I'm. You I, do I'm, these things. <laughs> oh, you but, do but, the I, things. but whenever I open myself up, everyone goes. Because you go overboard. It's almost like when a retard gets a heart on, they don't know what to do with it. <laughs> He reminds me of Flea a little. 
Flea or Flea reminds me of Earl. Well, here's the thing. Flea is at least the girl's age. This would be appropriate behavior for Flea, all confused. Earl, you're how old? I'm 38. You imagine what this is going to look like to her South African dad, a 38-year-old man following around a 19-year-old. <laughs> and she's probably just saying she's 19 years old. She's probably 14. <laughs> Uh, here is uh, Rob. Rob, you're on a fence. Hey, Ron, doesn't this mean that Earl's not asexual? Well, I still think it's asexual because he, he does not... First of all, his sexuality isn't appropriate. He doesn't know how to do it with an adult woman. He can only do it with a child. No, that's not true. I've been with how old is this, this girl? So what? She's, she's 19. And what time did you call her last night? I returned a call. At 1.30 a.m. I, I returned a phone call. I guarantee you the call you... She didn't call you back anyway. <laughs> what am I saying? Why would all these other people be lying? I'm, Why I'm, would everyone line up? The giant conspiracy. <laughs> I know. To make Earl look foolish. Earl, you're a psychopath, man. I mean, well, people at I'm, the softball game uh, registered that, and now this well, stalking. I registered what? I was. I, I mean, people I were softball. watching you talk to yourself, play batting <laughs> practice by yourself. People well, were like, I took pictures. I, 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 I sat with Pete. I, I was very, very accommodating. Mikey Boy took three minutes of video of you just do, doing, doing practice swings. People yeah, were watching my you. Swing. Snickering. What's wrong with that? On the field, when when we had a million people who could have played with you, were you giving yourself a pep talk? Uh, by the way, I got another spy report. Spy report. Spy report. Fred just says simply, Graz sucked cock. <laughs> <laughs> he was not good. Why would anyone think that he could play? <laughs> the man has a t tough time work walking. <laughs> he did the Mariah throw. He did. He had a crown on a second base, and it was three feet from first base. He threw it straight into the ground. <laughs> He's a spaz. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I don't know what to do with the staff. <laughs> now, Earl, you said that the company is again saying that we're uh, smoking in here. Now, we've told the entire staff not to smoke, right? Was anybody smoking on Friday? No, we weren't smoking on Friday. Dave? No. Hicks? No. Now, someone in the building has complained that we were smoking. So, Earl, did you uh, write back that you know that we weren't smoking? No, I did not write back. What'd you do? Ignore it like I everything? Didn't, I didn't ignore it, but I... I heard you told Wiki we were working yesterday. <laughs> no, I didn't say that either. What did you say to him? He asked me about an email, and I went, I... I basically, all I said was, like, I don't know where it's coming from. That, uh, that was my exact quote. I was like, I don't know where this is coming from. That is not even what you told me, Earl. I That's what I love about it. You're sitting next to him. Yeah. And he's lying to I'm me, li and you know the real story. I know. He told me, because our wiki said, uh, checked in with him, called him and said, what, no show today? And Earl goes, I don't know what you were talking about. We did a show today, is uh, what he told me. Here's uh, Chris. Chris, you're on of Fez. Yeah, I got, I got two things, actually. All right, first thing, you already get uh, Stalker Patty and Stalker Earl together since they're both old and both weird and both virgins. It'd work out great. And uh, You want to go out with Patty? No, I don't want to go Don't call her at one thirty. <laughs> oh, you know why? <laughs> She's age appropriate. <laughs> and and, and ha I know how to get Earl to, to shut up talking so much during games and stuff like that. Just get Dave to suck a big, fat, mutated toe every now and then. He quieted down real good Friday with that. Thank you. I don't know what he's talking about. No Suck idea. a toe, I don't know. Don't recall that. God, our listeners. <laughs> fucking so bizarre. I don't know what to do with this team anymore. <laughs> We're so wacky. <laughs> We're so strange. <laughs> I never said do you just get so overcome with emotion when a girl's nice to you? You don't know what to no, do? No, not at all. Oh, and now you're back in the news. Apparently, uh... Don Imus said something about Cream Pie Jones, and now Cream Pie Jones is crying. This surprises me. What color is Cream Pie Jones? He's white. Mm, figures. So apparently that's the big problem now. Cream Pie Jones is so sensitive. Uh, here, uh, here's Tim. Tim, you're on Run of Fez. Yeah, I was wanting to know, how come whenever you guys ask Earl anything, it's always... 
That's a flat out lie. He's lying out his butt. And I am that? yet to see everything's a lie. I'm yet to see anyone lie about it, Earl. He he has a nice serious identity crisis. He's like the untalented Mr. Ripley. He doesn't. He just goes around making up scenarios. Do you know what reality is, Earl? Yes, I know what reality is. What is it? It's whatever the situation is at that particular moment. In your mind? Not in my mind, no. Why? Are, I've never even heard of a human being taking batting practice by himself. No, it was it was very strange. And trust me, everyone was watching him do it. Now, by the way, <laughs> this thing with the harassing of the girl started Saturday. And within a couple I, of days of meeting, a, which, by the way, we all did. And is she an attractive young lady? Yes, We've all seen that. Why are you the only one to overreact? Overreacting because they're saying things that aren't true. Why are you the Saturday? Only... I went home Saturday. Why? Well, you met her on Saturday, correct? Yes, and I went home Saturday night. Millie said you started texting her immediately. I didn't. That is a lie. That is yes. a flat out Millie's lie. Millie's a liar. Everyone's She's a lying. liar. I will say it. She is lying. Hmm. Here's uh, Eric. Eric, you're on the Hey, buddies. I'd like to see Earl challenge Dave for ONA's Whipple Bowl Bat Challenge. Is that possible? I believe I believe I, in Earl. I'd crush him like I'd crush him with everything else. Undefeated. Do you want to do that, uh, Earl? Uh, no, I do not want to do the Whipple Bowl Bat Well, I'll do it, and so that's another uh, win for me. That's Just another win. <laughs> Thank you. By you forfeit? Him up on it? Six and oh. Six and oh? Like, uh, I will concede that one to you, Dave. You can do whatever you want with your ass. He does not have the heart of a champion. That's the problem. I want Mafia Life, Chris, to resend me because I can't find this picture of Earl talking to him <laughs> and giving him pep talks during the game. So, Chris, please resend me that picture because it was a great one. Earl also did a pep talk to his team, and Mikey Boy overheard him. Yeah. And uh, Earl said, I don't just want to beat Dave and the Mets. I want to embarrass their motherfucking yeah. asses. No, I, said, I did say I want to embarrass because you guys just I, talk shit. So Mikey Boy's lying now, blow. so now I, Mikey's lying. I so didn't say he was lying. Another one. Hey, Earl, it ain't shit when you back it up. You're not talking shit when you back it up. Right now, we can only say st Dave was stating facts. Mikey, call in. <laughs> I mean, uh, he. <laughs> it's insane, though. You're either... See, this is the thing. You're either... You're, you're overconfident... With your marginal, if not below, mediocre talent, or, <laughs> or on the field, I can outplay you any day of the week. And what are you happen. talking about? <laughs> it just just have the fucking video of the basketball game that you lost fifteen hundred uh, bucks I mean, that you laid down I, for. What soft, no, softball? I could do. I could beat we you. We are running it. You didn't. We're running out <laughs> of sports. <laughs> you you have an what do you want to say? Team game. It wasn't a one-on-one -on -one thing, and you got one hit in the game. I was the manager along with my wife. You basically. You you kicked a fucking war veteran aside. I did not kick him aside. <laughs> and took over the reins like Jerry Manuel kicking Willie out the door. You backstabbed Magoo, took his team, and then fucking drove him right into an iceberg. Mr. Titanic, you are jinxed to hell. Jesus, this is crazy. Uh, here's uh, oh, the MVP, Wakey Balls. Oh, yes. Wakey Balls. Hey, what's going on, gentlemen? Hey. Hey, um, I just wanted to say that the actual MVP of the game, I think, was the bottom half of our lineup. The G-Baby, the Taz. Good point. Uh, all those guys, they had some big hits. And Good. They, got, they got most of the runs driven in for our team. Great then point. Wicked Balls, I am taking the MVP <laughs> off of you and handing out to those guys. So this now becomes <laughs> official. And I would also like to say that uh, I'm from RadioGoldFans.com, not FBA. I'm one of the guys that started along with Lee Mel's and his sleeves. And his sleeves. <laughs> I would love to see these sleeves. I heard that Lee Mel's has sleeves. There, I saw one picture of them. It was very grainy, yeah. and they were walking into the woods looking over their shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> it was the Bigfoot shot. <laughs> did Lee Mel's play? Yes, he did. How did he do? Crush? No, he was not that Just good. crushed? <laughs> <laughs> no, he was Destroyed? No. Just dominated out there? Uh-uh. Lee Mouse, Lee, Lee Mouse, Lee Mouse, Lee Mouse, Lee Mouse. Uh, was he flashing the guns? Were the guns <laughs> out there? <laughs> he was flashing the guns. After Always. The, yeah. After the uh, the championship game, both the Yankees and Mets agreed that Lee Mel sucked. So there was a Lee Mel sucks chant. Here is uh, Mikey Boy. Mikey Boy, you're on a fez. Hey guys. Hey Mikey um, Boy. 
Hey, Dave asked me to call in uh, about Dave's Earl's pep talk. Yeah, uh, it wasn't actually the pep talk. It was before the game when I was remarking that, uh, you know, he's, it was, this is all coming down to his Earl against uh, Dave and Pitsy, and, and Dave Earl got kind of intense and said, I don't just want to win. I want to embarrass him. And I think he just completely psyched himself out because he you. wanted to win so badly. And he hit really well in the first game and then just kind of shit the bed in the second game. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. he wasn't playing because against me. Right. Let me tell you two reasons. Number one, there was no pressure in the first game. Earl does very well when it doesn't matter. Well, you have to win the first game to make the second doesn't game. Matter. But, I mean, the fact that you are stacking up uh, hits in a 26-5 to win, not as impressive as fucking blowing it two out spaces loaded. You know enough about sports I, 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 to I, know there's a guy you want on in a pressure situation. And are you that guy? I mean, I thought I was that guy. And, like, in the, and here's another thing that's interesting to me. You are our uh, EP here for many years. Have you ever once given this fucking team a pep talk? You tell us, hey, I'm too shy to be able to talk to people. I'm a guy who likes to do. Why wouldn't you fucking grab someone around here and try to pump them up before the show? Because softball is more fucking important to you than your goddamn job. I mean, that's, that's not true. It's just it, that was that particular situation. Why that, can't I ever see you going pitsy? Come on. You could do this. You have it in you. I don't want to just win. I want to dominate. i never seen that, Fez. It doesn't happen. Mm -mm. No. I'd like to see him give him himself batting practice before a show. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Thank you, Mikey boy. Right, see you guys. Peace. All right. Here is the young lady, Peach. Oh. That uh, Earl's been talking to for the last couple of days. How are you, Peach? I'm good, thank you, guys. What? How did Earl uh, treat you over the weekend? Okay, first of all, I'm I'm not 19, so I don't <laughs> I wouldn't hang out there if I was 19 in the first place. Okay. So, uh, um, what exactly happened over the weekend? Well, basically. It was, um, I was talking to a lot of people because, you know, this is like kind of, I am living my dream. I travel the world. I meet people. I talk to people. I like meeting freaks and art freaks and morons and stuff. It's something I do and I'm passionate about, okay? Right. So anyway, so I was talking to Earl and my feet was hurting because it was just going on so long. And he's a nice guy. Like, you know, he was talking loads of stuff that I didn't understand about quite well. And he was, like, um, talking about photography and stuff. And uh, Was it almost like when a dog gets a bone in its mouth and just keeps chewing it, shaking it back and <laughs> forth? You know, it's like you cut off after that four minutes. And you right. just start looking at his face. <laughs> you know, and you're just like... Thinking other stuff, your mind just wanders around and stuff like that. Were you surprised how much he called you at home? Oh, yeah. It was hard. Last night, I sat on the phone for almost an hour with this guy. And he was talking about politics. And, Earl, you're not a bad guy. Like, I have to say, but you're a freak. You're a stalker. <laughs> Yeah, we, now, we why is everybody alive? I don't know. We were engaged in a conversation. No, she did. I, 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 you I, dominated this I mean, conversation. I dominated the conversation. She, went, she asked. I asked her things. She gave an answer back. She, answered, she asked me things. I answered back. It was a conversation. It was like this, Earl. You were like, so what is your views on Americans? And I was oh, like, Oh, jeez. Well, no, no, that I was, that was in response to and something you went, had said. And now, first of all, you tell us... Everybody has it wrong between you and this girl. Now you're telling her it has it wrong. At any point, Earl, does it occur to you that you're being odd? I'm not being odd. I'm, I'm reacting to a situation. From her, right? Yes, but I, I was merely, I, I react. When someone is asking me something, when something, someone says something to me, I react to it. That's but why part do of the conversation. <laughs> You react with creepy behavior. I mean, creepy. I was, I mean, I was reacting, and then something was begging a question. I asked it. Did you talk to her about Jodie Foster, John Hinckley? Don't try to impress her that way, Earl. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Peach. I know you wanted to meet Brian K. Vaughn. Uh, I'm going to send her on a walkabout. <laughs> During that time, I will, I will, I'll, 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 I don't know. I'll do something. I will not be here. 
Right. I'll, I I re- I respect that wish. And he'll be I will making not. a shrine. In you his know what? I'll do it. I'll I'll put you on assignment. I'll send you somewhere in the city, and you can report back. How's that sound? I mean, wh- whatever is best for the show, I will do it. Okay, I'm sending you Schenectady. What I want you to <laughs> do is... I don't even know what Schenectady is. Let me know how the weather is there. I'm just trying to send this far away so you can possibly get it. But I, I will respect everyone's wishes on this one. And you'll stop calling this girl? I, I don't know her. It's done now. I don't even know her. No, he Peach, won't say I'm, yes. I'm, I don't know. I, mean, no, no, I, I will give him this. When he's caught, he stops. Because I, I've checked back with all I the will, other girls. I, I mean, and, and I don't mean this. I won't even say it. Won't even say it. How many times has this come up or over the past years when a girl's asked me to talk to you? At least three times. It's five times. This is now <laughs> the sixth. Just like Dave is beating but six again. times. <laughs> and every time I will give him credit for this, when he's caught, he stops. <laughs> he doesn't want the flashlight on him. And oh, you're being watched. Well, you won't hear a peep at it. So you come on in uh, Thursday, okay, Peach? Thank you very much, Ron. All right. And I'm going to bring Sheepy in here with you so he can, he'll watch your uh, flanks there. <laughs> All right? Nice, thank okay, you. Okay, so don't worry. Tell your family not to worry. <laughs> I sure will do that. All right, bye-bye. Bye. I don't want to be one of the South African things where you look out there and the white family's all stacked up in the front yard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, we'll see her Thursday. We won't see Earl Thursday. Fez, I want yes. you to get up and come over here and look at Earl giving a pep talk to Mafia Life Chris. Uh, it, now, this is during the game, Dave? This is during the run. This is every fucking sixth pitch. Weren't you guys yelling at him for that? Yes, we were. What's with the crazy thumbs up? <laughs> well, he's basically trying to show him how to pitch. Now, here's the other interesting thing. Look at the short porch. Look where the woods are. This is the fucking pitcher's mound. And <laughs> Earl's fucking proud of hitting it into those trees. Yeah. Right, I, I swear to fucking God, I'm not, I'm not joking around. It was Little League distance, okay? So his, his so-called home runs... We went 190 I, feet. And I'm not the only one that was hitting balls out, Dave. But you're the only one who's bragging about I'm it. I'm not bragging about it. I'm just making a, I'm making a point. That that should be a home run. You understand you're playing on some kind of home field rules there. I, that I just cannot that, be a home run. I, I thought the ground rules were backwards. I thought, I, I mean, if you if a ball is... Um, what Did everybody I, play under the fucking ground rules? Yes. We, then, we, then you don't have a problem. Right. The problem is if... Oh, Earl's the only one who has to follow that rule. I, no, then you I, have I, an I agreed excuse. To, I didn't. I agreed to the grounds. I didn't necessarily like them, but that was the rules of the then game. Then stop bringing it up, or, or don't play. We We're acting like rules. you hit the ball into the next millennium. <laughs> <laughs> and you hit the ball very. I hit the ball very well. I can't. Which help was that. a mistake. You should have been hitting the fucking line drive Great. and, and then, fucking all you can get there. I mean, and I'm and I I was very surprised because that's usually how I hit. I don't know why I'm hit. Mm-hmm. I mean, because I was you shocked. were pulling. You hate Dave so much. You were fucking pulling the ball and you let your ego get ahead of what it took to win the game. Without, you should have been slap happy like you normally boom. are. Boom. And let me say, he wanted to outdrive me because I was doing slap shit. I was right. Ty in the ball. I was five for five. These quote unquote errors. I knew that they had a soft <laughs> left side of the. So why not hit it there? Right. It's like Earl would Play be a smart like, ball. It's like Earl Play would a money be, ball. Exactly. It's like Earl saying, Steve Nash is covering uh, uh, Shaquille O'Neal, but don't throw the ball to Shaq. Right. Just go for an open jump shot. No. If there's a weakness, exploit it. Earl, how does Dave's ass taste? <laughs> Shaq asked the same question to Kobe. How does his ass taste? I, I, I don't know how it tastes, but hey. We're... Every single game, he beats you. And Not now every... I had to take away your South African beauty. Well, I bet you already pre jacked to. Am I right? No. No. Did you touch yourself on the phone with her? No. Tell me what you think of American politics. <laughs> Crazy. Well, he's doing his fucking PSA he's, he's, show. Yeah, was, again, that was a reaction to something she had said. No, she didn't. Louis C.K., he is going to be unmasked this Friday, June 27th, 1 p.m. Comics Comedy Club in New York. If you want to be part of the unmasked with Louis C.K., 
Here's the email address. XMUnmasked at gmail.com. That's XMUnmasked at gmail.com. Put Louis C.K. in the subject heading. That's this Friday at 1 p.m. My baby girl has to take off. Can you go <laughs> pianos for me? Yes, I will, honey. I will do that. Uh, she likes me to call pianos for her. So Louis C.K. is going to be a lot of fun. Dave, you may be banned from this. Oh, man. Because you annoy Louis C.K. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, he, he he pulled some fast ones on me. I had to go. I had to re retort. Well, do you notice that I don't do it unmasked on you? No, you're absolutely it's right. It's Louis C.K. Day. It is. You are, to him, what Earl is to women. <laughs> Unmanageable. And here's another thing I want to do. I want Cream Pie Jones to stay away from Don Imus. <laughs> and I, I don't want Owen A in the middle of this controversy again. <laughs> What color is Cream Pie Jones? He's white. Are we no longer allowed to ask what color people are? Is that offensive to you, Earl? No, I don't find any offense. I mean, what? It's just asking about your skin color. In what context are you asking about skin color it's just, anyway? It's just, it's crazy the way this country's gotten. Sometimes I think the lucky one is George Carlin. Hmm. He got out. He literally got out. Uh, by the way, on the Unmasked this weekend is the uh, Jay Moore. Uh, make sure you listen to that one too. That's gonna be a lot of fun. He was he was actually great on the Unmasked show. Uh, here is uh, here's Mark. Mark, you're on Fez. Hey, Mark. This yeah. has to end between Black Earl and Eastside Dave in the boxing ring at the Hard Rock. Uh, <laughs> I don't even think we can do the boxing anymore. That's how bad everything's gotten. It's just you too goddamn difficult. To pull off with the lawsuit stuff. I don't think XM would even approve of it. Here's uh, I don't care, you're on my face. Hey, buddies. Yeah. Uh, I just want to say one thing. Earl is fucking lying about the distance of his hit. I was playing outfield at the time. It went maybe 10 feet past where he said. I just didn't feel like getting it. Earl claims he hit it into the next millennium, and it is a ball that they're looking for <laughs> in the next millennium. We don't know. It might have been hit two millenniums ahead. <laughs> Well, if 10 feet means a millennium, then sure, he hit it. Yeah. His ball is the end of the natural, where it goes out of stadium into a cornfield. It was so odd. Now, um, the other night was so much fun at Bar 9 uh, for Millie Hatchett's big party. Uh, Riley Luck, by the way, told me one of the most amazing stories of all time. She had her sister with her. I'd like to get them on someday just to talk about this. It was really, really uh, interesting. But I thought the nicest thing was we were becoming so more family based. Our good friend Lucci was there and brought her son with her. And it was so sweet to see her carry him around all <laughs> night and take it. She's a good mother. Oh, yeah. She yeah. did not let that little boy out of her hands all night. And, you know, uh, she and I have had our problems in the past. Sure. But I will never take uh, this away from her. She is a really good mommy. Now, I would cut his hair. I think mm -hmm. his hair is a little too long. It's a little too what I like to call, you know, Florida looking. But she <laughs> is a good... She had him on his hip all night. Oh. And does she show him love? Oh, it's the sweetest thing in the world. Here's uh, Lead Belly. Lead Belly, you're on Fez. Hey, what's going on, buddy? Yeah. Um, number one, Earl is completely lying about all that shit because I found the ball five minutes after the first game was over. Found all five that he launched during the Boston game. Well, you must have a time machine. Yeah, exactly. Um, Earl, are you shocked about this? What, what, I didn't say the first game. I said the second game. And they're still looking for it? The second game, you only hit one ball there. I, why not? I hit it. I hit the ball out. What am I going to say? <laughs> why would Mikey... Bo out is 120 feet, Earl. I, I, I see the but, picture. Uh, but out is out. Whether, whether it's a small field, big field. Why do you brag out? about hitting it out of the infield? I'm not bragging about it. Because that's all the outfield is there. I'm just standing out, too. It was not considered a home run. You're doing your team a disservice by going for that rather than hitting a liner that can roll into the bushes the way the Mets did. Championships. <laughs> um, I also just wanted to say that it was really good hanging out with everybody. And I just want to send a big fuck you to Flea for just throwing my camera to the ground after taking my picture with Drew Boogie and smashing it. Flea, um, a pussy. Well, here's the other problem. Call the FBI line. <laughs> do you guys let Flea show up? I don't know. We I mean, all anyone ever does is bitch about Flea. Yeah. He ain't going to change. 
We have to do security. At the end of the game, people were throwing champagne on each other and throwing cake on each other to celebrate. Yeah. And I noticed in the corner, Flea putting cake on his own face. <laughs> To fake like he was, he had gotten involved in the celebration. So pathetic. Everyone oh, saw it. that awful. And was like, holy shit, that's sad. Take it easy, buddy. All right, peace. Thanks a lot, Belly. <laughs> By the way, I was talking to a uh, baby girl. Um, she's starting to figure out who my pal talk spy is. My pal talk spy, I met a young lady the other night that I'd already seen in the bathtub before I met her. That's how well my pal talk spies are doing for me. Angel Foreman? Is my guess. I'm not going to say who oh, it is. Because you keep saying Angel. It could be anyone. She is, oh, she's amazing, the work she does. Now, I had a spy go out there and keep an eye on all the guys on the show. We heard about Earl. Uh, Fez, are you proud of Pitsy? Uh, here he is, the best ball player on the uh, Ron and Fez show. Every picture of him, he's got a handful of nuts. <laughs> yeah. A big fucking brush mustache and a handful of nuts. Goomba, do a little something to break the stereotype. I had the really bad crotch rot that day. I wore the wrong underwear, and I was just jockage all you, the afternoon. Can I tell you, for Italians, the wrong underwear is underwear. <laughs> That's the. They are so not used to it. And what is with Mikey Boy trying to take pictures of me grabbing my balls all day? He said that there wasn't... I didn't say it was from Mikey Boy. I said it was from Mikey B. I don't know who it is. <laughs> that could be Mikey Bot. Yeah. You ever see this uh, Super Nanny show, Fez? You know what? I never uh, checked into that thing. Well, it's a nanny that goes around if you're having trouble with the children. I'm going to send it over to Lucci's house. Okay. Because, oh, uh, you know, she's a, she's a good mommy, but, well, let's just say this. He gets a little feisty. Hmm. He's a little feisty one. He's rambunctious. Yeah, he is. He's I, that age. I heard he likes shots, too. Mm, well, kids, you know, yeah. you got to calm him down. John McCain, he has proposed a $300 million reward for anyone who can develop a better car battery, one that can deliver power at 30% of the current cost. So I guess this would be a super car battery that could power an electric car. All right, so what he's saying is that we no longer invest in things ourselves, mm -hmm. but if someone, uh, for what we pay for oil and what we're doing, we should be putting billions of dollars into trying to find out uh, alternative fuel sources. Not waiting for someone to come around and give them $300 million. <laughs> so, First of all, what do you think that patent would be worth? Oh, it would be worth billions. Billions upon billions upon oh, billions. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because you, you would... You might even be looking at a trillion dollar idea here. You would revolutionize... He's going to give out $300 million. <laughs> Stop sounding like somebody who doesn't understand money. <laughs> it's so funny that there's just now, I guess, just bounties out. for any, It's like Mr. Howe. Whoever can get me off of Gilligan's Island gets a million dollars. Can he <sighs> even do that? Can he promise that without, you know, Congress's backing? No, he Sounds can't. Pr <laughs> First of all, he should be saying, I'm willing to invest America's money into this. Yeah. It'd be, it'd be like John F. Kennedy going... I'm going to give out $300 million to anyone who could get us to the moon. <laughs> it doesn't fucking happen that way. That's not the way it happens. It's not his money. Did it, someone tell him No, that? we're not talking about the $300 million. This would be worth so much more than that. Yeah. Our country should be investing into this stuff. You would see people happen. How much money have we fucking sank into Iraq? That has been how many fucking billions of dollars? Oh, that's um, hundreds. I mean, that's like what? 800 billion now? How, how much? Like between six and 800 billion? Billion. Yeah. And it's worth 300 million to come up with a fucking way to get us off oil. You don't even make sense. <laughs> he wants we don't even fucking turn around and try to fix New Orleans. I can't even listen to this stuff. Oh, Jesus Christ. This country's so off the rails. <laughs> We are a fucking super train that has jumped the track, and we just haven't hit yet. <laughs> and when we fucking hit, the way the bodies are going to be thrown is, look at goddamn Iowa. Yeah, man. Yeah, and more levees breaking. So it's just, it's nonstop, even though the Girl, rain... look, Zimbabwe on TV. <laughs> look, i like to see you over there in the cinder block house. <laughs> I really would. I looked up there when he said, look at Iowa, and got confused. <laughs> I'm like, Jesus Christ, they really are having problems. It's worse than you thought. 
So yeah, even though- I love that they call those kids soldiers. You see a kid in a fucking t-shirt and jeans running down the street. We would call it gangbanger. <laughs> They're calling it a soldier. Yeah, because they, I mean, they train them up early. And they, they learn to shoot. Train them. They fucking give them crack and guns and say, "Here, shoot at people." That's not training. That's not a real army. These are fucking marauders. These are raiders. Soldiers. They kidnap those kids. Uh, here's uh, Big J, your manifest. Hi. Um, I just was wondering why we're talking about a battery that already exists. I'm sure everybody's seen who killed the electric car by now. So I don't really know why he's offering money for something that's already out there. Now, uh, Lucci was uh, riding on her son's skateboard. They have a better way of getting around. The two of them get on a skateboard together. Oh, that's, oh, that's, that's nice. Yeah. Efficient. Oh, I'm so glad I'm not with her anymore. I'm so glad that's <laughs> over. Now, according to a new Newsweek poll, Barack Obama has a 15-point lead over John McCain. And that means what? Uh, that favored by 15%. No, it doesn't. It <laughs> means nothing is what it means. <laughs> that poll means nothing. Remember when you used to read us the other polls that Hillary Clinton was a lock? Oh, yeah. And you read those to us every day? Right. What did they used to tell, tell you? Oh, that Hillary was going to be the nominee. No, I didn't. I said that oh. means nothing. And I'm telling you the same thing now. No one has voted. How could someone be 15 <laughs> points ahead? What is wrong with waiting for the fucking election? Why do we got to make up crazy numbers? You got to create a race. You got to create some, try to create some drama where... But why? Isn't I, it dramatic not, enough we're going to get a new president? Why do we have to turn it into a crazy reality show <laughs> with, with uh, swerves and twists? We all like to be analysts, though, you know. Do we, we? Yeah, because, I mean, we do it with football. It started with, you know, Monday morning quarterback, and now it's uh, going to politics. It's a great point. How many people guaranteed the Patriots fucking win? Guaranteed they, it. They all did. It was a done deal. It was a lot. How many of the uh, analysts said that the Lakers were going to beat the Celtics? 85% of them. At least. The whole... Uh, it doesn't matter till you play the fucking game. Yeah. How many people guaranteed Earl's Yankees over our team? I know. I was part of that bandwagon. Shitload. Uh, how many people on this show said that Mike Myers uh, would be a big hit over Steve Carell? I did. I did. Who's the only person to pick Steve Carell? I picked Steve Carell, Mr. B. Champion over here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Carell. <laughs> Read a cup eligibility, please. You know what? Maybe I should let you drink uh, a little Tito's out of that cup today. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> you know why? Was, protect the, the family. Carpet, I got to protect the family. You didn't even think about it, though. I didn't show you another email. Believe me, I thought about it. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah, Get Smart brings in $38.7 <laughs> million, wins the box office over the weekend. Love Guru comes in fourth place with $13.9 million. Mm. Not even a close second. Comes in fourth. Now, Lucci's taking her baby to see Wally. That should be fun. <laughs> Have you seen the thing for this? Yeah, this is Wally or something? Yeah, Wally the robot. Yeah. For the first half hour, there's no talking. It's, no talking right. at all. That's annoying. They say it's, it's very adult. I watched uh, the uh, review on Ebert or Roper and Ebert, whatever. Did they like it? Uh, they loved it, but said it's like kind of not for kids. Uh, you know what? I saw that same thing, and... The guy on, uh, and I don't know, he's not Ebert or yeah. Robert. I forget his name. But he goes like this. I hope kids will just give this a chance. <laughs> I go, when you're a kid, why should you give something a chance? You're fucking four. You just want to yell back at the screen. Yeah, I don't know who that guy is anyway. He's been filling in a lot lately. Look who's up on PT today. It's the missing crazy Jen, who we haven't oh. seen in forever. And Mr. B I actually even had a call and an email in. Uh, to her. Ignored by both. That's terrible. Did you notice that they're not even using thumbs up, thumbs down anymore? They're not it's, allowed to. It's skip it or see it. Yeah. Uh, Ebert owns that. Oh, he does? Yeah, and he won't know. let him use it. Uh, How could you learn the term thumbs up? <laughs> That's the most amazing thing. <laughs> that fucking existed before you came around. Yet somehow you got it. Yeah. The fucking Romans were doing thumbs up, <laughs> thumbs down thousands of years ago. And yet you, Roger Ebert, you own it. She's waving. 
There is somewhat of a delay on that PT. 34 seconds. Uh, Bill, Bill, you're in running Fez. 29885, my buddy. Hey, buddy. Hoo-ha, hoo-ha. Thank you, buddy. Thanks, buddy. Hey, uh, Ronnie, uh, look at all the uh, experts and uh, even on your staff that uh, predicted Big Brown was going to win the Preakness, and now there's a <laughs> red-headed asshole with uh, Ichiban on his ass. Um, yeah, we're not even using Ichiban anymore, which is weird. What do you mean we're not using Ichiban? Well, we so... didn't use it this morning. <sighs> Fez used to bring us in the Ichiban every day. You gave up on that, Fez? No, I didn't give up on it. Well, we're an hour and a half into the show. Did you do one today? No. That you but... gave up on it for at least the last hour and a half. The Ichiban should be Earl hit a ball into the next millennium. <laughs> Will Smith, he was on the Today Show pushing uh, Barack Obama while he was doing an interview about Hancock, saying that um, it's for the first time in years, it's good to be an American when you go overseas. Oh, because uh, people overseas used to hate him and now they like him because of Barack? Exactly. Yeah, now they're seeing, you know, they're seeing Americans in a new light. Who cares? I can honestly say that. I don't know why we pay attention to the overseas people. That would be like going like this. Uh, honey, I talk to the neighbors and they want us to paint the kitchen blue. No, it's none of their <laughs> fucking business. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to vote. I want to vote on our issues, not what everybody else around the world thinks we should be doing. I don't think that's asking. I don't think that's crazy talk. But I, I have a problem with that because our isolationist, you know, kind of the way we operate hurts us. We move Wait unilaterally all over a Let me take a, l a look around and see if this is 1910. We're a fucking isolationist country. Well, what I mean is by uh, what I meant by by that is not caring about foreign opinions. Um. Uh, well, th th uh, other than Iraq, do you have another fucking thing that you can bring up? Uh, no. But I think the Iraq Thank is a you. giant thing. We all know Iraq is a fucking mistake. I don't need France or Ecuador to tell <laughs> us it's a fuck up. But, it was. But they tried to warn us ahead of time. I know. Guess what? So did I. Nobody fucking <laughs> listened to me either. Fez was pro-Iraq at the time. Yeah. We fucked up. We made a mistake. We, we got to fix it somehow and move on. But again, I don't need Czechoslovakia to fucking figure that out. People in this country have already discussed it. Why do we got to check outside ourselves? Because we need other countries for, you know, we can't only survive on American technology and then economy. Let's call, uh, and they're not dealing with us? Tell me somebody who's not trading with us. I don't know. Uh, do we still have an embargo on Cuba? Yeah. All right, Cuba. <laughs> Guess whose idea that is? Ours. <laughs> you don't think fucking Cuba would say yes <laughs> in a second? We're ready for some goddamn PlayStations? <laughs> they would love it. Now, do, you, uh, do you have a problem with Will Smith uh, spouting off about the election while he's promoting Hancock? I have more of a problem with Will Smith doing Hancock. That's my big problem. <laughs> No, I actually, I think that that's going to be a better movie than any of the movies I've seen this summer, which is like saying Earl hit a home run into the woods. <laughs> <laughs> it's a short field. They are changing the advertising for that movie, though. That's a little bit unsettling. Have you seen that? Yes, I've seen almost the entire movie from watching trailers. <laughs> yeah, the new commercials, are they're playing it very dramatic. Like, he is the chosen one to save us, whereas it, before it was a comedic thing. So now I'm nervous that it's not going to be funny at you all. You don't have to be nervous. You're not going. <laughs> None of you guys get to see the movies. <laughs> Please. And guess what? I'm not cracking. And I only got to see two more movies. And you guys don't see any of these movies still in demand. And you know who can, you can blame? Mr. Penny Pincher. <laughs> uh, Bill. Bill, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, Vichiban Moron. Oh, me? Yes. No. I am the Ichiban master, not moron. You're a moron. Hey, uh, why do we need world opinion? I see every time there's a disaster on the world, Americans are out helping. Even Iran, when they were busy talking crap to us in the middle of this Iraq mess, they had an earthquake. Who sent aid? We did. Katrina happened. Who's helping us out? Nobody. That's what we need the world. Well, Not including us. us. So before you get too fucking proud, look what we've done in these other places. I have a, you know, sending some people some medicine and some cheese. <laughs> you know, that is the right thing to do. Don't act like it's not. Well, well, well. Who do we got on the phone here? As soon as Hicks takes his big thumb off it, I'll be able to talk to the missing girl from the Ron and Fez show, Miss Crazy Jen. Hello, Jen. It's me. Yes. I got 
gotta tell you, I gotta tell you two things. Yeah. First, like the the whole email thing and shit. Fucking Ronnie, you won't believe what's been going on in my life. Yeah, it's a disaster. I'm sure. It is. See, my my pop, right? I told you he lives in Florida, right? Or lives in Florida. Yeah. And he was a junkie, but now he's an alcoholic, right? Oh, so he's moving up in the world. Yeah, he's moving up. He's a getting lot of better. Stuff. Well, he he's like the junkies and alcoholics. He he still got he's off drugs, but he still got junkie mentality, right? Right. And like his brother, his brother's moving to California. He he was living with his brother and my grandfather, and my grandfather died, and he didn't leave him anything in the will because you know he he just he's a junkie. He just take everything he can from him. Right. And so his brother's moving to California, and so he he don't have nowhere to live, and so now he's trying to get in with my sister. Because he's trying to sue Pepsi because Pepsi hit him with a bottle or some shit. I don't know. But, it, like, I was trying to tell my family. She's like, it's my father. I'm like, listen, you can't fucking let junkies move in with you and stuff. Right. You know, you know what I'm saying? It, so it's like, because of all these reasons, you couldn't answer your email? No, I, I've just been wrapped up with my family. Oh, I see. So you've been all. too busy. No, we're not too busy. I got to straighten shit out. See, they always come to Let me. me. Wait, you are the dependable one in your family. I am. I am the one. If you could believe that, that like when when shit happens, like they call me. And then on top of that, my brother, who had no business to be in a Philly, got jumped by eight people, and then just want to take revenge because he thinks he's from Goodfellas or something. And just being around, and they call, and you know, I live in Maryland. Right. Like, what, who, what who jumped him? Huh? Who jumped him? Just, he was, this is, this is what happened, and this pisses me off, too. He goes to this party, right? Mm hmm And my brother, he's got a little bit of mouth on him, so what? And so he's with his little teenage girlfriend. I'm oh, Earl would like her number. Huh? Earl would like her number. Yeah, I'm going I'm to give her a number. Yeah. I'm going to give her a number right upside her head. Oh, good one. <laughs> Listen, Way so he it. goes, right, and he gets jumped by eight people, right, gets his car smashed in and stuff, and after he won a lawsuit because he had to get surgery in order to get money for the lawsuit, but anyway, but then, but nobody helps him, like, and he's upset about his car, and I say, you could have been fucking killed. What the hell are you worried about the car for? Well, you know, we don't get to talk to you much, Grandma, but when we do, we get all the family <laughs> news. You ain't going on. Well, I, I wanted to get a hold of you because I thought you were going to come up here and do the trapeze, and I forgot who you were going to take with you. Was it Earl or Fez? I would or... take Earl with me. Earl, it was okay. Earl, yeah. I can't remember, I can't remember the, the, the fucking gimmicks that don't play out no, on this show no. anymore. There's so much Listen, failure. No, uh, who, me? No, our guys. Oh. Yeah, he is a failure. But this, but this is what I want to do. When Pickles, Pickles is coming back because he's in, I can't say it, it's upstate New York, I always say it. If you could help me out. Bimington, New York. Do you know where Bimington, New York is? Binghamton? Yeah, Bimington. I can't say that word. Try ever. to say it again. Try to say Binghamton. Binghamton. There you go. Is that how you say Bimington? Uh, now you fucked up. You, you <laughs> rushed that, back into it. You're close. Yeah, Bimington. Binghamton? Wherever the hell. Like, I don't know. They got chicken or some shit up there and hunting. But this, I gotta wait till he comes back. But Earl, yeah, I'm gonna do... I had to turn my, my volume up. I'm going to do this challenge with you, right, Earl? Are you listening? I'm here. Because you've been sticking dildos up your ass and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, he has been. Yeah. You got it. You... I know. I've seen them. <laughs> and, like, licking people's ears and stuff. Yes, that's, that's Earl. <clears throat> yeah. But I'm going I'm to give you a good challenge, Earl. Are you ready? More than ready. You're going to go trapezing with me, buddy. Me and you up on the high wire. There's a place in New York, because I did it in Baltimore. Earl... Do you like heights, Earl? No, yeah, I can handle heights. You can't handle this height, Earl, because it's All right, let's figure out when we're going to get you to come to town. We'll all take I... you out to dinner. We'll have a nice time, all right? Yeah, can I come in July? July would be perfect. And can I, tell you, can I tell you one more thing, Ronnie? Yes. You were talking about movies and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Well, there's two things, but I'll tell you this. There, um, there's this movie, You See the Strangers? Uh, Yeah. You saw that movie? No. I'm okay. just trying to get you off the phone now. I don't believe I I, I, I did this shout out for you. No, this is the suck.
talkiest ass movie right. that you've ever seen. Ronnie, th- these killers come to your house, right? And it's just, it's something about white people and movies that they just stay in there. And it make the white people look bad. Oh, uh, are you doing some brother's joke right now no, from I'm fucking not. some. Anybody, anybody who ever seen this movie and they said it's based on the true story because this black woman I know, right? I can't say her name because she's probably listening. Bimington. Bimington. Bimington, New York. She Ugh. said that somebody walked into her house like the strangers, right? And then she said she walked, and she's big, Ron, she weighs like 450. And she walked up to the door naked, and she said, can I help you? And they just turned around and left. Well, that would be a very short movie, Jen. Yeah, that's what All I'm right, saying. we will talk to you later, okay? All right, and Ronnie, you gotta read Sex, Drugs, and Cocoa Puffs. All right, we'll do, honey. All right, are you gonna call me? Uh, why don't you call us? All right. All right, Ronnie. Ronnie, make me feel so sad every time I leave you. Make me feel like the Hulk music should go on. I should just walk down the street. That's O and A's joke. Oh, it is. Um. Yeah. All right. Bye, uh, bye. See you later. Oh, why did they open up that fucking can of worms? <laughs> oh, she's Jesus back. Christ. Run a fish